Close your eyes and focus on it. Declare that we give you all the glory. We, we give you all. Somebody with a loud voice declare. We worship you, our Lord. With our hands lifted. 
one more time somebody declare with a loud voice out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water Spirit of God, we welcome your presence. Father, take over. Influence our minds, our hearts, our thoughts, our imagination, our words. Take over, Lord, and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I want us to just honor the life of our Papa, His Eminence, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams with a loud clap and a shout. Somebody you can shout glory to God. Glory to God for the life of His servant, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And we pray that the Lord will satisfy him with long life and that God will show him his salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus, that Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams will be delivered Amen. from the wickedness of the wicked. That the Lord will grant him his very presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And we also want to honor our executive and resident senior bishop, Ebenezer Albodai. Thank you very much. Oh, do it better for the Lord and glory be to God for the life of his servants. Amen. And just put it together for yourself. There is no church without you. And we thank God that you have allowed yourself to provide a community for us to come together and corporately worship him. Amen. To God be the glory, you shall be blessed. Somebody declare, I shall be blessed. Somebody say that I am blessed and I shall be even more blessed in the name of Jesus. Say, say, say this after me. Say, Jesus is Lord, and I believe that God rules in the affairs of man. Say, I declare that Jesus is Lord, and God has not lost his power, his authority, and his sovereignty over the affairs of man. Say, God still rules in the affairs of man. Somebody say, say, Jesus is Lord and God still rules in the affairs of man. If you believe that, give him a shout of praise. Honor him. Jesus, lift up your hands. Say, Father, tonight we have come that you may show us mercy and give us grace in the time of need. Say, oh Lord, empower us through your word, through your spirit to be overcomers and victors over the issues of life in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I decree and I declare that after tonight, my life shall not be in submission to the determinations of the enemy. Say, after tonight, my life will not be at the mercy 
of demonic calculations. Say, after tonight, I shall win. I shall prevail. I shall overcome according to the will of God concerning my life. Say, after tonight, God's agenda and purpose for my life, it shall be fulfilled as it is written in heaven. Say, O oh Lord, forever, your word is settled in heaven and it is established in my life on earth. If you believe that for the next 30 seconds, give him a shout of praise. Can you pray in the spirit? Le preveke di hasaya. Lo parandi skiva da hasa di kita. La pranda sade ke tele me de beke do lo bahas. Male krado sada baba baru ata. Rako sana na mama moho sada daba baru ate. Le pranda sada ka baru ate ni mahasaya te. Can somebody lift up your voice? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Iko la para kata hasaya dana mama mamu rada kata ilanto na mahasad watini mahasaya kata ya rapondo shada da baha kete kete le prando skapa da baha ya rakato lo baha saya ta dearly beloved building up yourself in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. He that speaketh in tongues does not speak unto men but unto God. He speaketh mysteries. He that speaketh in tongues edifieth himself. Somebody lift up your voice. Rako shadadaba. Rekenda skabada haya. Seta. Rako shedededede de hose. Itola mahasaya keta. Rapo boho sandada kapiru ate. Lepanda shadadabo hosa. Rakandededededededededededededededa ha. Raka pa parwa tini mahasaya da 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 da. Rapa pa da shada ka parwa te. Ika na mana mahaso da 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 duwa te. Rekanda da 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 haso ta ya piran delepe. Rekando shana na 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 mama. Hey shada da 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 dosa. Rapa na shada ka pa. Somebody for the next two minutes, lift up your voice, pray in the spirit. Are you praying?
Just a hold that. Can you play the melody? Don't play hardly. Play the melody. Can I hear your voice? worship on the Lord, to the Lord. Lift it up unto the Lord. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Psalm 91 from verse 9. Look at it. It says, because. Somebody underline that in your Bible. It's very important. That word there. Because. All of this is because. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. As for you, you live in church more than you live at home. You worship and you pray more than you converse and chat. Because you have made the most high God. Thou hast made Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Even because. Can we look at the Amplified Version? Listen, after tonight, I believe that God will show up for people in a manner that he has never done before. Not everybody can receive this because some people know that they have not made God their habitation. But this is for those who have made the Lord their habitation. 
This is for those who have been depending on the Lord uh, from COVID times until now and you are still depending on Him because you have made the Most High God your habitation. At work, He is your habitation. At home, He is your habitation. On the highway, he's your habitation. It also means that you act like you are ever in his presence. You never act as though he's not around. All your actions, all your utterances, all your attitude, all your response to life, all the things you think and imagine, you do them as though you have the reality and the actuality of his presence with you because you have made the most high God your habitation. Because because you have made the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place. Do you see that? How do you make a person your dwelling place? Look at what will happen to you because of that. Look at it. Verse 10. There shall there shall no evil. Somebody shout and say no evil. I'm not feeling you tonight. Somebody shout and say no evil. One more time, you have it more in you. There is a louder shout in you. There is a depth of violence that needs to come out of your voice. Uh, because you have made the most high your dwelling place. Uh, no evil. Somebody say no evil. Somebody shout again. Say no evil. One more time. I, I need this shout to reach a certain frequency. sound. Say no evil. Maybe we should stand on our feet. Maybe we should stand on our feet and do it. Shout it one more time. Say no evil. It says no evil shall be for you. Any evil that has your name on it. In the name of Jesus. You know, we decree and declare that your name is here by counsel. Any evil that has the name of Action Chapel International written upon it, we decree and declare that because this is the habitation of the Lord, uh, that evil is hereby cancelled. Uh, any evil that has the name of our children on it, uh, by the message of God, uh, let that evil be cancelled. Uh, any evil that has your marital certificate, uh, your business registration, uh, the name of your children, uh, the name of your husband, uh, the name of your wife, uh, the name of your ministry, the name of your miracle, upon it tonight, uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, let that evil be cancelled. 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 Uh, let that evil be... Somebody shout and say no evil. Say we cancel evil. We cancel impending danger against the church, against our lives, against our children, uh, against the Archbishop. Uh, say tonight, uh, we decree and declare uh, it is a night uh, henceforth uh, of no evil. Can you go back to the scripture? As for evil, the planet is peculiar to people. Everybody and the evil designated for them. So that which, watch this very carefully. There are some things that are plotted to affect you personally. That is the evil. Then it goes from those things that have personal impact to those things that have general impact. Plague. You see that? The evil, it only it may have only one person's name on it. But the plague has the name of all humanity. If a plague comes into a city, then it is meant for the entire city. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then he says, you will, what it means is that you will escape the plague. The 
plague means a distraction that has become common to a certain group or community of people. It is common. It is general. But he says what? It will not come near you. You didn't hear me. I said it will not come near you. Say by the fire of the Holy Ghost around me, around this house, we decree and declare any plague against humanity, any plague against the nation, any plague against Christianity, any plague against mankind, I decree and I declare by the fire of the Holy Ghost, the plague shall not come near me. It will not come near this house. Plagues are not only sicknesses. Any destructive, anything painful, any affliction that becomes common in a season to the general population or a community. There was a time in this country where arm robbery was a plague. They were hitting homes like nobody's business. But you shall escape. Any plague that has been cooked and worked from the kingdom of darkness against the body of Christ tonight in the name of Jesus we decree and declare it shall not come near us you know why I love this one it doesn't say we will escape it there is a difference though. to escape a thing it requires effort <laughs> it doesn't say we will escape it it said it will not come near you Oh, you didn't hear that. I don't think you got it. To make escape or to run away from a situation requires effort on your part. But this one, it says that you, it will, you, you, will, you will watch TV. You will, pray, you will do what you are doing and you will not have to move because the thing will not come near you. Somebody shout and say, I believe it. Any plague over businesses we decree and declare it will not come near us. Any plague over the work of the hands of men, we decree and declare that it will not come near us. Any plague of mass unemployment because of any season and time the world is entering into, tonight we decree and declare it will not come near us. When people start complaining, oh, these days there's no money, there's no money. It's a plague. It's a financial plague. It affects two or more people. It affects, it, it, it becomes a general complaint. When the problem becomes general, it turns from a, into a plague. Tonight in the name of Jesus, let the plague be far off. Let the plague be far off. Let the plague be far off. Say any evil plague assigned from hell against our lives uh, say tonight uh, we decree and declare by the hand of the Lord uh, let the plague uh, stand afar in the name of Jesus eh, no plague or calamity evil events will come near your tent nor your dwelling in the name of Jesus let no plague come near this house let no plague come near the household of the archbishop. Let no plague come near our families. Let no plague hit our businesses. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, there, 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 are, there, there are reports of a looming food crisis. We declare that it do not come near us. The God who gave the Israelites manna, he is still alive and he is even doing greater things. And I decree and I declare to you, whatever plague will affect this nation, affect the world by the message of God. And because you name the name of the Lord and because you make the most high your habitation, the plague shall not come near you. In the name of Jesus. Look at verse 11. Koda Hasaya. For he will give what? He will give what? Say, I declare that after tonight, me and my household, this church, we will enjoy angelic help 
an angelic presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Say so we decree and declare any wickedness that wants to use any vulnerability in my life to destroy me and to have power over me. Say I declare that that vulnerability, that blind spot in my life where the enemy works his devices against me say tonight the blind spot is hereby removed by the power of the Holy Ghost say any access any loophole into my life that the enemy may exploit to my disadvantage tonight by the help of the angel of the Lord I declare that the blind spot the vulnerability the loophole is hereby removed in the name of Jesus. He will give his angels a special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you. Accompany, defend, and preserve. You will not be accompanied by friends. But by angels. I, I was waiting for somebody to grab that one and make a loud noise unto the Lord. Say tonight, we provoke heaven through prayer for the release of angels. And I declare to you from now to the end of the year, you will have an angelic encounter. You will have an angelic episode in your life. When we speak of angels, you will know what they look like. You will know how they work, how they operate. You will also testify and say that I have seen it before. It's not just a fantasy nor a fallacy, but it's a real thing. May you have a testimony of angelic visitations. Somebody say yes. about anointing because a few days ago the Lord was teaching me that anointing doesn't stop conflict you can be anointed and you still fight every day but what stops conflict is presence huh? what can when, when Jesus showed up on the other side the man had been troubled many times over when he showed up the demons realized that this is the end we had to go so anointing does not stop or end battles, nor conflict. But presence will put a stop to it. Presence put an end to foolishness. Let the presence of God and the visitation of angels be our portion from now to the end of the year in the life of the Archbishop, in this church, in your life. We provoke heaven through prayer for the release of angels. That is going to be our prayer tonight. We'll get to it very shortly. Let's move on. Tonight is a night of asking for presence. We've asked for things and sometimes you get them and the enemy comes for them. Get presence. Somebody say get presence. Anointing can come by prayer alone and fasting and those other things. And anointing is good, it's powerful for assignments. But the presence is everything. The presence is everything. The presence is everything. And we have to move from a place of praying to tarrying. Because when you pray, you, you, you are trying to establish or enforce your agenda. But when you tarry, you are waiting for God's agenda. After tonight, may we seek the agenda of the Most High God. After tonight, may we seek the agenda of the Most High God. Let His presence come. They shall bear you up upon their hands. It means you will be float walking. Huh? When you are taking steps by your feet are not touching the ground. After tonight, in the name of Jesus, may you soar on the wings of angels. 
Lest you will dash a feet against any stone. He said, when the angel comes, there is no more error. There is no more accident. There is no more I didn't know. There is no more I wish I had known. When the angel comes, there shall be no more error. After tonight, any stone that the enemy has laid in the way for you, by the hand of the Lord, by the help of the angel, may you rise up above it. In the name of Jesus, verse 13. He said, you shall tread upon the lion. Say, anything that is intimidating and threatening and fearful in my life, say, tonight, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I decree and I declare that I am treading upon it. And the other, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Because, another because, he has set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him. Say, I enforce my deliverance from every difficult situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, say, any wickedness in my life right now, by the hand of the Lord, I declare and I enforce uh, my deliverance uh, by the message of God. Uh, deliverance for the church. Uh, deliverance for the archbishop. Uh, deliverance for our families. Uh, deliverance for our children. Uh, say tonight, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we enforce uh, through prayer the hand of the Lord uh, for deliverances. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, can you clap your hands for two minutes uh, and enforce this deliverance? Declare it. Deliverance from every crisis, every calamity, every pain. Deliverance from death. Deliverance from accidents. Hey, by the hand of the Lord, by the outstretched arm of the Lord, we decree and declare that we are delivered from the imagination of the wicked one. Our businesses, our households are delivered. The archbishop is delivered. His family is delivered. Our seed are delivered. Marriages delivered. Businesses delivered. Right now, somebody cry out for deliverance. Are you praying? Here you say, I declare that my life is delivered from the jaws of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Say, by the outstretched hand of the law, I declare that I am delivered from the wickedness of the wicked, and I declare that no plague shall come near my dwelling. If you believe it, give the Lord a shout. He said, he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. May you be set on high. May you receive promotion. Where God puts you, may the enemy not be able to reach you. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, because. I love the because. Because he knows and understands my name has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love and kindness. Trust and relies on me knowing I will never forsake him. No, ever. God will never forsake you. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. 
I will deliver him and honor him. Not only will you be delivered this year, you will be delivered and honored. Joseph was delivered and honored. I, 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 I'm not looking for just deliverance. The trouble was too much for me to be delivered and simply left alone. You should be delivered and honored. May you see this goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let's end at 16. It says, with long life. You are not dying this year. You are not even dying next year. In 2030, you will still be alive. 2040, you will still be alive. 2050, you shall still be alive. 2060, you are not going anywhere. 2070, I don't know how long you want to live. When we get to the year when you want to depart, you can stop saying amen. But 2060, may you still have life in you. 2070, may your great-grandchildren begin to be born. May you see them and walk them and run with them. 2080, may the Lord show you his goodness in the land of the living. May you be like Caleb who said, I still have the same strength that I had at 40. 2090. Should I go on? <laughs> May you live to be more than a hundred. Or oh, that amen was weak. Listen, you will not live and be like Jacob, who lived and saw too much pain that <laughs> his countenance did not even reflect his age. But your life will be sweet. Let God I just felt this thing in my spirit. It was sweet. And immediately, it's like I was asking, what is this? And, and I felt like God was erasing trauma. Trauma, 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 trauma. There are people who have been through all kinds of trauma. Tonight, by the power of the Holy Ghost, any trauma that has defined your life, let the message of God, let the power of the Holy Ghost erase it now. Can somebody clap your hands and pray? Lift up this prayer right now. Any wickedness that has defined our lives, defined the life of the adversary, defined the church, tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost, we delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it right now. Clap your hands, somebody. Lift up your voice and cry out. satisfy him and I will show him my salvation listen full salvation also manifests into ease of life you know I say that in the book of revelations Bible says that it was after Satan had been cast down that there was now salvation in heaven can you imagine heaven of all places the angels didn't experience the taste of salvation was not on their tongue it was after the devil had been cast down that the Bible says that there was now salvation hey, in the kingdom because of the presence of an entity. Any entity in our lives that is not allowing us to taste the reality of the salvation of the Lord. Tonight we lift up the sword of the Lord. Let that entity die. 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 Listen. I'm going to do something. By God's grace, I'm a bishop. Where is Micah? Run. Go and get my sword. Any entity that has fought and denied us the sweet taste of salvation right now in the name of Jesus, let that entity be cut down 
any human being, uh, any personality, any God, any power, any deity that has denied this church uh, the sweetness of salvation uh, by the Son of the Lord. Uh, we cut it down. 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 Clap your hands. Lift up your voice. Cry out. Shows up, we will lift up the sword. That entity is coming down. Lift up your voice. Go imagination he said project this altar in the realm of the spirit to contend with every other altar that is fighting you that's what I heard that's what I heard and tonight let power emerge from the house of God emanates from the house of God all the years of prayer saturated, cooked and tied and bound together. Let it be lifted up as a mighty sword of war in the realm of the spirit uh, that whatever has fought us uh, even generations before us have prevailed uh, that in our time, in our season and in our day that let that thing be cut down. Let it 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 be cut down. Somebody lift up your voice. Cry out tonight. Hey. Maloa kada da do tada. Sagwa tana maha. Sagwa tena maha ya. Atena maroka da. Ya sonda de de de. Hey, sagwa kaya. Makasha de de. Malawata. Malawata. Sante shaya. Makosaya, itela wala guata, sende tele, sende tele, zabeka, kaparuata, rabababa, masada dada, masada dada, masada dada, rabamosa, apaniniato, rakapanuate, aparuatata, apanda kataya, atondiba, aparuateta, apapedea, asaduate. 
Matamayosa, la Prakata, a Panimi and Costabra, a Palacatana Mahaya, a Brando Sedaviaco, a Panimi and Tele, a Pralacata, a Pralacata, a Pralacapalata, a Pralacapata, a Panda Pacataya, a Pania Codiata, a Sakwata. any wickedness that has fought the church that has fought the archbishop that has fought his children uh, that has fought you and I uh, we project the altar of the Lord uh, in the realm of the spirit uh, any battle you cannot fight uh, with your own hands uh, with your own mind uh, standing upon your feet uh, we project the altar with angels emanating from it uh, let the altar of the Lord uh, confront the power of the enemy let the angel of the Lord uh, rise up to our defense uh, rise up to our defense uh, rise up to our defense uh, rise up listen we were in the US and there was a young man who was serving he was serving before I got there there was something we struggled with but because he was willing and available we let him serve along the line the Lord began to show us who this guy was in the realm of the spirit and I became very angry physically and I wanted to send him away find a way but the spirit of the Lord said to me don't touch him 
because you need to stay justified at least in the flesh and I will deal with it because spiritual reasons are not an excuse to deal with people physically you have to take it back into the spirit you can't sack somebody because of who they are in the spirit that you see you have sack them in the spirit first and let them exit your life in the natural otherwise you are still in error the fact that you know that they are witch doesn't mean that you can treat them anyhow because they are still human in the flesh and you've got to understand these things the Bible says they're just they live by what? faith in God so every day I will see him after that I was greatly irritated the Lord said don't send him away don't stop him from doing what he's doing I will deal with him one day it wasn't in a church prayer meeting it was just a group of intercessors and myself that had met to pray and the Lord said to us lift up your hands and begin to crush the head of any serpent that has come among you and is fighting and contending with the church now this guy was in the church before I got there so we lifted up our hands according to the direction. And as we said, we strike the serpent down. As soon as we said, I have the video on my phone. Bishop, have, I, it's not right for me to play. Maybe we'll censor it and play it. So you hear some of the confessions. As soon as we began to do that, we strike the serpent down. He was standing there praying with us. And this guy can see in the spirit. And we strike the serpent down, then he'll go down like that. We strike the serpent down, he'll go down again until he fell flat on the floor, started foaming and spitting all over the place. God said, do that. And we did it. You know, the power of God is in our ability to hear him and obey him. God does not impose himself on any man. When he said to Abraham, leave your household and go to a land I will show you, he wasn't yet Abraham's God. It is when Abraham obeyed him that that obedience made him his God. So it is obedience that makes him your God. So anytime you disobey, he's not your God. Cut the whole shire. And tonight, from this altar, with all its saturation of prayers and declarations, I, I, I'm not sure that you understand the dimensions to which we are praying tonight. I said from this altar from all its saturation of prayers and declarations we project the sword of the Lord even in the heavens for all our enemies to see him. and by the sword of the Lord any power any danger any shrine any wicked man or woman any personality empowered by hell to contend with our lives to contend with our destinies let the sword of the Lord cut that personality down say so we locate them from their high places and tonight by the sword of the Lord we cut them down oh I'm not yet feeling you huh? say wherever they are in their private chambers in their high places in the name of Jesus tonight let the sword of the Lord search them out locate them and cut them down lift it up lift up your hand lift it up like a sword some of them, they are in bunkers. Excuse me, oh, I'm not trying to be political. Just like Putin is in a bunker and sending troops. They are in bunkers. They believe that no missile, no atomic, no nuclear weapon can access them. But the sword of the Lord, if it is able to sever and separate between the marrow and the bone, then there is nothing it cannot penetrate. Hey, tonight. Jezebel was in the life of Ahab. And it caused Ahab to sin against the Lord. It was Jezebel. Ahab 
you notice that when he discovered that he had done wickedness, Bible says that he ripped his clothes. He tore it right where he was. And he pleaded with God for And God used him to show a prophet how repentance and mercy works. So the problem was not really a but he had somebody in his life that was a wicked influence. You see, the enemy does not delight to impose, but he likes to influence. Because the greatest conclusion you can have in your life is the conclusion you made yourself, not one that somebody made for you. So that, what he does is he gives you a question, then you answer the question for yourself. He employs a sweet, nice influence, makes you doubt God, and act by the flesh. Tonight, any demonic influence in our lives that opens us up for the enemy to prevail against us by the sword of the Lord, by the sword of the Lord, let that influence be cut down. Let that influence be cut down. Let that influence be cut down. We cut it down. We cut it down. We got it stop. We got it. Are you ready for this prayer? This prayer is going to shrines. And is going to household. It's going to wells in our mother's houses and father's houses where they bury things. It's going there tonight. You don't know why. Listen. Godly character is needed at the time at the arrival of time and chance for you to break through. David had a nature that was godly. When God said he will pursue and recover all, that nature was needed to, needed to be in exhibition for him to recover. There is an enemy that comes after your godly nature so that when your time and chance arise, you don't exhibit the key for your deliverance because that godly nature is your, the key for your deliverance. So, people have hurt you too much that you don't want to be merciful anymore. But there is a season and this moment in time, unlike all the other times that you have shown mercy, that is your time and chance. And it is the same mercy you have been abused for that will be required. But you know what the enemy has done? He has caused your mercy to be taken for granted so long that you have given up on showing mercy. Your time and chance has arrived. The mercy nature God put in you is required as a key to open the door, but you have given up on it. Your convictions have been eroded. That's how the enemy operates. He doesn't come and impose. He works us. It's a device. Tonight, we destroy the device. Let the mastermind behind the device as we lift up our voices, clap our hands and pray, just like Jezebel was behind the device. We cut them down. 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 Somebody lift up your voice. Clap your hands and pray. Hey! Losataka walakata. Hey! The sword is going to die. La boko toso to kaba ha. A panga katana mohosa. A paya kota. A kalwa payasa. Send the son of the Lord to die. Hey! Jesus. What is Another thing we are cutting with the sword is soul ties. Soul ties. You know what the soul is? Huh? When we talk about the soul, you can think of our thoughts, right? Our feelings, our imagination, our memory. They are all components of the soul or the workings of the soul, our emotion. So when we talk about soul tie, it also means emotional tie. It, then it also means what? Memory tie. Because everything that is a constituent of the soul is involved in the soul tie. So watch this. Watch this. When you are in a soul tie, what will happen to you is that sometimes you know that an act is wrong. 
or it is keeping away the presence of God from your life. When you are in a soul tie, you know what God is looking for. But the person you are in a soul tie with, in order for you to do that thing you know God expects or not to do what you know he doesn't want, they will have to be hurt because your actions will hurt them. Not because you are doing wrong, but because they cannot accept it. Which means that you will make a decision that will make them cry. Or you will make a decision that will hurt them or will make them angry. But because you are in a soul tie, which is a condition, you do not want to make them angry. So you will rather offend God and please them. You see how the soul tie operates? Because it is your soul, the realm of your emotions that are tied. So what makes them happy will make you happy. So if they are sad, you will be sad. So when you think about breaking away from them because this thing that is, good is not good, what happens is that the enemy comes and reminds you that, you know what, are you really ready to see her cry? To see him cry? Are you really ready to see them in pain? Are you really ready to see them angry? Then your soul is now moved by the potential of their emotions. So you keep doing what is not good for you. And you give the enemy an occasion. Tonight, every soul tie. And soul ties, people you are afraid of, you also have a soul tie with because it's an emotional state. Fear is an emotional state. It is embedded in the soul. So if you are afraid of what people would think, you automatically have a soul tie with them. You can't do what you are supposed to do because you are afraid of what they will say or what they think. You have a soul tie. You just don't know it. And so tonight, every soul tie that has become a weapon in the hands of the enemy, ah, even over the lives of our children, our children go to school and they find friends. And the friend can tell them, I don't like your shoe. And they come home and tell their mother, this one didn't like my shoe. I don't want it anymore. You think the, you, the enemy has started something. If you like, ignore it. But whatever the enemy has begun, Whatever the enemy has begun on our blind side through the workings of the soul tie, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, let the soul tie be destroyed. Let the soul tie be destroyed as we clap our hands, uh, lift up our voices and prayer. We destroy the soul tie. Hey! You pray. The sword is suspended. It's suspended. Suspended. Let it remain suspended from now to the end of the year. Let the appearance of it drive away the enemy. The Bible says that it is the sword of the Lord. It is wrapped up for the slaughter. It's ready. The glittering sword the glittering sword. Let that sword be lifted on our behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus. See, over, over your roof, the roof of where you live, let it be pointing up and be shining. 
when they come to mishandle you in your dreams, let them see it first. Let the sword keep our intimidators at bay. Let the sword keep our oppressors away. Let the sword keep that which fights us at night and even at noonday. Let the sword of the Lord keep it away. Let the sword of the Lord be lifted on our behalf and the behalf of our children. On behalf of the children of this house and their destinies, we lift up the sword. 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 By God's grace, anytime I have the privilege and the opportunity to come here, for the next seven times I will come here, I will bring the sword. You know why? You know why? I just, the, the spirit of the Lord just reminded me of Jacob. When he wanted the speckled sheep, huh, he cut a stick into speckles and he put it before the sheep. And whenever the sheep were mating, they were looking at the thing and they would bring forth speckled lamb. And the spirit of the Lord said, tell my people to focus on this thing. And as you focus on this as the sword of the Lord, keep your eye on it. I, for, for the next seven times that I at least will come here, I will bring it. And every time you look at it, it will remind you that God is fighting for you. And you will walk in that knowledge and understanding. And that indeed he shall fight for you. Somebody shout and say he's fighting for me. Put your hands together for the Lord. And I said 62, read it in your own time from verse 6 to 9. But it says over there that you who call upon the name of the Lord, give him no rest. And he said, I have set watchmen upon thy wall, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or nor night. Ye that make mention of the name of the Lord, keep not silent. Verse 7, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You shall become a praise in your family. You shall become a praise in your community. Our children shall become a praise among their generation. If you believe that, give the Lord a shout and say yes. Then the Lord gave me, as we were preparing to come, these scriptures. And I want to show you something prophetically that is going to happen. Isaiah chapter 60 talks about the fact that arise and shine for thy light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said darkness shall cover the face of the earth. Gross darkness shall cover the people. But upon you a light will shine. There will be darkness. There will be darkness. It is the word of the Lord. There is so much going on in the world. It's, if you don't, don't even pay, if you pay attention to it, it's scary. They are talking about food security, food crisis, fuel shortages. I heard the other day a country, a whole country had fuel reserves left for one day. And when that day came, there was no more fuel in the country. Sri Lanka. How? How does a whole country run out of fuel? No car is going anywhere. Do you know what that means? There is so much distraction pending that it will take God to give you an eye escape. And indeed, we will have that escape. It doesn't matter what the economy of the world tends to. We shall have an escape. God will make a way out. There will be a distinction between those who name the name of the Lord and those who do not. Put your hands together for the Lord. Look at it. Exodus chapter 9 from verse 1. I'll read through it quickly. Exodus then the Lord said unto Moses, Go into, in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go. For if thou refuse to let them go and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel. 
there will be a difference. Though. Your business and the business of the unbeliever, it cannot be the same. <laughs> When the economy affects their business, uh, let that same economy keep yours alive. You didn't hear that somebody shout aloud, amen. It says, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. When the things and the possessions of the people of the world die, yours shall not die. Can you take us to the Amplified Version? And the Lord appointed a set time saying, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Verse 6. And what happened? Verse 6. And the Lord did that the next day. And all kinds of the livestock of Egypt died. But of the livestock of the Israelites, not one died. I declare to you, by the power of the word of the Lord, that not one of yours will die through any economic hardship. Your business will not die. Your marriage will not die. Your investments shall not die. Your children will not die. Your health will not wither. The work of your hands shall not die. Your dream will not die. Your vision will not die. Your expectations shall not die. Your vision will not die. Your destiny will not be stolen. If you believe it, shall be. Yes! Move on to the next one. So none of it died. Exodus chapter 10, verse 21. Exodus chapter 10, from verse 21. From verse 21. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the heavens, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. Isaiah 60 says there will be darkness, right? A darkness which may be what? Do you know what it means? The darkness crawling under your skin. It's not something that your eyes only perceive. You literally, it means there will be fear with it. Ah, and look at it. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky. And for three days, a thick darkness was all over the land of Egypt. All over the land of Egypt. The Egyptians could not see one another. Nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. Oh, but all the people of Action Chapel International, all the children of God that come on Friday nights, even though they are tired from work to pray, all the children of God that have made the Lord their habitation, all the Israelites have supernatural light in their dwellings. We decree and declare tonight as we lift up prayer, let the light of God remain in our dwellings. Let no economic hardship, let no spiritual climate be able to influence our light. Tonight in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that the light of this house, it shall not be put out. The light of our families, it shall not be put out. The light of your business, it shall not be put out. If you believe it, shout yes! Lift it up. Can we pray that prayer? Yesterday we were praying and the Lord said something to me. He said, pray for a change in spiritual climate. Because your climate determines your weather patterns. Your climate determines which seasons you go through. If you have four seasons, it is your climate that determines. And your climate determines what will thrive and what will not thrive. There are some places apples will not grow. It doesn't matter how much you love apples and how many seeds you, of them you have. If you plant them there, they won't grow because the climate does not allow it. Tonight, by prayer, we are creating a spiritual climate. And that climate, it will have only one season. A season of goodness. That season will never change. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we lift up prayer as the church of God, we decree this thing uh, that every unfavorable climate uh, around us that is dominated by devils, uh, dominated by evil men and women, uh, let there be a shift and a change in that climate uh, and let a new atmosphere 
of angelic presence, even the presence of God, let it surround our lives. Somebody lift up your voice, clap your hands and pray. There was darkness all over Egypt, but in Israel there was light. We decree and declare that in the midst of any shortage, in the midst of any crisis, that there will be light in our houses, there will be light in the church, there will be light over our businesses, that the Lord will make a difference in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody for one minute pray. Hey, you have one minute to declare it. Declare that you will always have lights. Our lights shall never be put out. Our lights shall always remain. It shall remain. In the name of Jesus. Exodus chapter 11 verse 1. This is the last one. From verse 1. Adonai. Then the Lord said to Moses. Yet, will I bring one play? Somebody say one more. There is one more that God will use to set the record straight. Ah, after the children of Israel defeated Syria, they said, Oh, the Israelites, their God is the God of what? The mountains. So let us find them in the play. They will always keep coming until that one more happens. There will be one more. I will bring one plague more on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterwards, after that one, they can't hold us any longer. After that one, you are breaking out of detention. After that one, you are breaking every yoke. After that one, we are breaking out of captivity. After that one, we are breaking addictions. After that one, we are breaking the power of poverty. After that one, there will be a divine turnaround. Somebody shout and say yes. Then the Lord said to you, yet I will bring one more. Afterwards, he will let you go. When he lets you go from here, he will thrust you out altogether. He will say, oh, I don't want you anymore. Look at the next verse. Speak now in the hearing of the people and let every man solicit and ask of his neighbor and every woman of a, a neighbor jewels of silver, jewels of gold. He goes on. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was exceeding great in the land. Move on, verse 3, verse 4. And Moses said, that says the Lord about midnight, I will go out into the midst of Egypt. Huh? That is, let's just say the world or the systems of the world. Egypt, the world. And all the firstborn in the land, the pride, the hope and the joy of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne even to the firstborn of the maid servant who is behind the hand mill and all the firstborn of beasts. But look at verse 6. Somebody just pray in tongues for 30 seconds before we take this one. Look at this. There shall be a great cry in all the land of Egypt. It will happen. It will happen. Such as has never been or nor ever shall be again. Verse 7. But against the children of Action Chapel International, against those that put their trust in the Lord, shall not so much as even a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Say, Father, from tonight, I put my trust in you. You who rule and reign in the affairs of men, make a distinction. 
Lift up your voice, clap your hands and pray that prayer for one minute. of the Archbishop and his family between this church and those that fear you not in Jesus name Amen. Put your hands together for Bishop David King the sword will speak on your behalf God will honor his word God will dispatch his angels as declared by the servant of God Luke chapter 1 verse 45 he said Blessed is she that believes. And by extension, blessed is he also that believes. For as surely as the Lord lives, there shall be a performance. Is there anybody here who believes? Anybody online who believes? Then as surely as the Lord lives, every declaration made tonight shall come into manifestation. Put your hands together and give a praise. Hallelujah. We're coming to the Lord's table as instructed by our Papa. We will combine it with our offerings. If you have your tithe, please step forward with your tithe. The rest of us, please get your offering ready. If you have your tithe, step forward with it. We are combining it. Remember, your tithe will rebuke and keep the devourer away. Your seed will determine your harvest. And your tithe will make sure that no devourer will touch your increase. So lift up your tithe, lift up your offering wherever you are, and let us pray. Father, by our seat tonight, we say thank you for the gift of life. We acknowledge you as our source, the source of every good thing we have and anything we will ever possess. As we give, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless us and make us a blessing. Let that which belongs to us be released without fail. And we ask that you will rebuke every devourer and waster as we pay our tithe. In Jesus' name, amen. Please drop your tithe on the altar or in the drop boxes around the altar. Prepare your hearts as we come to the Lord's table. The Bible says our Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed. He took bread after he had given thanks. He broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. The Bible said the same way. He took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, we lift up these elements before you. Acknowledging your great sacrifice that bought, O oh God, for us and guaranteed salvation and deliverance. 
that secured our healing and our redemption. Tonight, we command the table blessed. We sanctify these elements. We invoke the mystery of the communion table. And we command life and blessing on this table tonight. That lives shall be transformed. That destinies shall be transformed through this prophetic act. In Jesus' name, Amen. The temple ministers will be positioned around the various offering boxes. As you drop your offering, please pick one. We will eat it together as our tradition is. Thank you. shed for us. Let's drink in remembrance of him. And just dip your finger, just anoint yourself. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13. 
He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Tonight, simple prayer. Say, by this prophetic act, we command divine exemption. Exemption from disaster. Exemption from death. Exemption from every demonic manipulation and every projection of the enemy. Exemption from evil. Exemption from destruction in the name of Jesus. And now by the power of his broken body, we command the healing of your body. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, we curse every disease. We flush out every infirmity in the name of Jesus. We command tumors to dry up. We command healing in every organ, healing in every cell, healing in every tissue of your body, healing in your joints, healing in your blood cells. In the name of Jesus, we command healing in your nervous system. Let every psychological sickness be healed. Let emotional diseases be healed. In the name of Jesus, may God guarantee your miracle and secure your health. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Pass the empty cases to the protocol workers. Don't forget quickly, tomorrow morning, we have morning glory from 7 to 8. Papa will be in the house himself to lead us. We encourage you to come invite your friends. And let's keep the pressure on the enemy. Sunday, we have two services, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Your life will never be the same. Amen. Shall we please stand? Thank you so much for coming. Those of you online, thank you so much for joining in. And I pray that you also will receive all the full benefits of the broken body. If you haven't had the communion already, pick your own communion elements and join us at home. The prayer we have prayed here will touch you wherever you are. May your miracle will be secure. Hallelujah. Let's worship as we bring our meeting to a close. and lift it, say I shall not die but I will live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living say any group of people who want me dead I command them to go in my place any pit they dig for me and for my loved ones and my divine helpers for the archbishop and his family we command them to fall into their own pits but as for us May Jehovah our God show us great mercies in the name of Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his good face to shine upon you. And may Jehovah lift up his countenance over you. We command you blessed. We declare you blessed. We pronounce you blessed. And we declare so shall you remain. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Oh,